So uh, the first thing I would like to uh, note is that there are some historical background um, points that should be mentioned. The first thing is that uh, after Crusades in the 13th century, a part of Latvian tribes resettled in south. So nowadays it is called Lithuania. Uh, and uh, formerly it was one part of uh, the Baltic cultural sphere, which extends from the nowadays Moscow in the east uh, to the uh, southern part, which is nowadays Kiev of Ukraine. Uh, the most western part is the nowadays borderline between the Poland and the Germany uh, to the coast of the Baltic Sea. And the northern uh, extent uh, goes up to the uh, borderline between nowadays Latvia and Estonia. So all this uh, Baltic cultural sphere uh, encompasses uh, the area of uh, common cultural uh, heritage, which is visible in uh, both the traditional costumes and music and other aspects. So uh, it is uh, interesting that in the 16th century, the earliest Latvian texts are printed in alphabet writing in books. However, the peasants' education in Latvian language and also using the alphabet uh, began since the mid-18th century. So just uh, uh, in uh, one uh, century and a bit more, the alphabetic literacy in Latvia rose from 86% in uh, 1897 to 84% in 1920, as it was uh, due to the uh, First World War, which uh, made a lot of casualties. And then in 1925, it reached uh, already 89% of population of Latvia who are able to uh, read and write in alphabetic way. However, uh, in Lithuania, uh, in 1923, there were 33% uh, of illiterates. So those people who cannot read or write alphabetically. Uh, Latvian resettlers uh, colony uh, in Vismantai village, which you can see uh, on the top uh, right corner of the screen, uh, they had their first uh, primary school open only in 1920, and it lasted only for two years. So the first opportunity to experience the alphabetical education was only in the 20th century. Uh, what is more interesting that uh, 200 Latvians lived in Vismante uh, village in 1934 and among 16, uh, 60 library users, 13 could read or tie knots and uh, parents of 24 more people could do the same, although they themselves couldn't. So uh, it means that uh, more than the half of um, library users either themselves, either their parents could read and tie the knot script. Uh, it is known that uh, knot records or knot script uh, are used by Inca people um, as uh, called as a quipu or kipu, and also have traces in many parts of the world. Uh, so how the knot script, how the knot records uh, look like? There are some examples. On the uh, top um, left part of screen, you can see Kripu from the Inca Empire. Then on the uh, left uh, bottom part, you can see Warazan from Japan. Uh, both of these have been usually used for uh, arithmetical calculations. Uh, including such of the taxes uh, which are due to be paid by uh, local 
people. Then in the middle uh, bottom part, you can see Mizuhiki. That is a not uh, variant which is used uh, for celebrational uh, envelopes, um, which are often given even today. And one uh, kind of these knots can be uh, bind uh, in a way that they are easy to untighten. And another way is that they are, if you try to pull them, they tighten even uh, further. Um, and then uh, on the right top uh, part of screen, you can see that there is this um, Latvian Mazgluraksti, uh, not script from uh, Latvian uh, side. And then uh, there is a theory uh, that uh, maybe Devanagari, uh, known to Indian people, could be also a trace from the not script, not records, that are put from the three-dimensional uh, space into two-dimensional space uh, uh, in a new kind of writing that could be originally have been uh, not script. Uh, so, um, also uh, as the Latvian uh, peasants um, began to be educated uh, using alphabet in uh, 18th century, uh, they uh, had um, to learn these characters, uh, but they were foreign to them. And uh, if you see uh, the Latvian uh, folk song and other folklore heritage, you can notice that there has been a resistance to the alphabet or to the book or to the reading of such materials. Let's say uh, one of them is uh, such Gramatinya, gramatinya, skreito elles dibana, tevis dēļ mani kūla irītos vakaros. In English it would be rendered as book, o oh book, go to the pit of hell. I was birched because of you, be it morning, be it night. Birching is a kind of punishment uh, when a person is uh, hit by um, a rod or a birch um, tool. <laughs> then um, another uh, thing um, particular connected to the not script or not records is uh, song clue or the yarn ball. In English, uh, there are two ways of uh, naming the thing. Either it is yarn ball or clue. In Latvian, it is dzies uh, On the top right uh, part of screen, you can see the old logo uh, mark or trademark of the Latvian uh, archives of the Latvian folklore. And it shows a yarn ball or a clue with the capital letters LFK, uh, which denotes the uh, abbreviation of this um, institution. Uh, however, the new uh, logo type doesn't use this uh, song, song clue anymore. Um, according to many scholars, the first volume of uh, Latvian folk songs called Dainas. Um, although it uh, composes even uh, more than uh, 500 songs about uh, not script and the uh, song clues, it is considered that uh, that is just a metaphor. And um, there are some uh, examples of these songs. Man māmiņa iemācīja dzīvusiet cilpiņās, mīļus vārdus skaistas dziesmas satīt vienā kamolā. Mother taught me uh, to tie the yarn in loops. Kind words, beautiful songs, wind in a one clue. Kuru dziesmu izdziedāju, to satinu kamolā, kad aizgāju tautiņās, pavienāju ritināju. Each song that I sang, I wound up uh, in a clue. When I went to the husband's house, 
uh, when I married, uh, I unwinded one by one. Mazi bērni nerātnīši manu dziesmu nicināja, ielikuši vīzītē, paistabu vizināja. Uh, small children uh, are naughty, they despised my very song, uh, put it in a shoe and dragged around the room. How could you put a song in a shoe and drag it around the room if it is not a material? Uh, it makes you think uh, whether these song clues are just a metaphor or a real thing. Uh, in the said village in Lithuania, which is uh, near to the city of Shaule, uh, which has also the uh, meaning connected to Saule or the sun, which is also uh, one probable place of the Battle of Saule, uh, which uh, uh, is uh, now <coughs> as the uh, Balts uh, Unity Day uh, between Latvians and Lithuanians and other people who are living in the Balt Baltic culture. <laughs> So in this village Vismante, there was a local historian, Janis Brintis, and you can so, uh, see two pictures of him. Uh, the right side one is he in 1940, and the left side one is he in the last year of his life in 1987. So uh, he uh, had preserved three phonographic Latvian note record systems. Uh, and uh, they are the Beka script, which has 11 phonemes in it. So 11 combinations of uh, knots that you put together to make uh, a special um, sound in the uh, script. Then Brintis script uh, has uh, uh, 20 phonemes. And Krauk's script has 32 phonemes. What is interesting that Krauk's script uses a single uh, thread uh, and uh, both knots and loops together. Uh, yet uh, Debeck and Brintis script, uh, they use two threads uh, together and uh, uh, put the knots on either of these two threads and bind them together. Uh, moreover, uh, there has been discovered also ideographic Latvian not records. Uh, however, they are yet to be deciphered. What uh, does it mean ideographic? It means that uh, not only a sound is um, symbolized by not a script uh, item or unit, but also the meaning of a word or longer information is also uh, possible to be put in the combination of knots. However, the, uh, the artifacts are very few and uh, it will take more time to decipher them. And then another person is wood sculpture, um, Betty Strautnietze. Uh, and she has um, uh, been living in Butnieki village in the northern part of Latvia. And she had preserved the color wise significance in categorization of not records contents. So the yarn used, the wool yarn used for uh, the recording of information, uh, it can be uh, done in various colors. And uh, she uh, has uh, preserved this uh, information about the categories uh, depending on the colors. So uh, here you can see two examples of uh, song clues, um, which contain the not script, not uh, records. And according to Betty Strautnitz, you can discern several colors and the usage of them to denote the topic or the theme or the category. So the white uh, color is uh, white color yarn is used for divine, 
So those who are connected with uh, sacred, with the holy, with the deities, uh, sunny and light themed songs or other contents. The green yarn is used for forest, meadow, nature themed contents. Uh, black uh, for wistful and sad. Uh, blue for children's silly and playful songs. And according to Betty Strautnitz, there has been also used the red colored yarn. However, she couldn't recall the exact um, contents. But according to other uh, sources, uh, it can be uh, possibly connected with fertility, luck, or well wishing. And then you can see the table uh, on the bottom side of the slide, which shows the letters, uh, the sounds, and the combination of the knots. For example, one white knot uh, shows the sound ah. Uh. Two uh, white knots uh, consequentially so show the sound o. Oh. Then three white knots show the sound u. <coughs> and uh, one uh, black or dark not show e, two of them show e, three of them show y, uh, and uh, for example, sound b or b is made by one light and one dark not, and the sound p or p is made by dark, one dark not, and then one light not. Uh, so um, the usage of uh, colors is either by uh, lighter and either by darker and they are combined in a way that you can see on the right side when there is a, a white knot then the yarn is made in a knot but it uh, encompasses or goes around the uh, or the other uh, yarn which is not bind together so and uh, if the knot is uh, dark then the knot is tied by the dark yarn and it is tied around the lighter thread uh, on the bottom part of the uh, slide you can see uh, four letters riga which is the capital city of latvia and you can see the way how in the knot script it can be uh, tied. Um, so one dark, three light uh, knots, then take a small space, then two dark knots, then open the space, then one dark knot and two uh, light knots, open the space and then one light not. What is interesting that uh, apart from using these yarn threads, also there has been used the cuneiform uh, script version, uh, which can be used on uh, flat surfaces. And uh, these cuneiform uh, script variants are shown <coughs> on the same uh, table, just under the uh, rings here and they, they are composed by either vertical or horizontal lines combined in a specific way so here riga uh, is showed in this uh, kind of way in cuneiform but it's interesting that you cannot find uh, several sounds here uh, not f and not uh, h so not uh, F and not H uh, letters, because these letters have never been originally in Latvian language. In Latvian uh, sounds, uh, these two are new ones, which had been brought from uh, foreign uh, origin. That's why they are not uh, among these uh, letters here. However, in case of H or F sound, uh, in Latvian, it is uh, substituted by P sound. So, for example, if you would like to uh, tie your name, 
in a not script or a write or car it on a flat surface and you have the H or F sound, you should uh, substitute with the P sound. Um, and uh, what is interesting that um, these uh, two uh, examples of song clues are uh, photographed by uh, scholar Andris Michulis uh, in the uh, beginning of uh, 1990s. Uh, and all these uh, yarns are uh, very fragile uh, due to the uh, moth infestations. And if uh, moth uh, larva uh, happen to uh, be somewhere near, <coughs> then they are uh, destroyed. And uh, that's why these uh, song clues uh, have to be uh, retied, remade uh, along the time in order to uh, make them uh, preserved. Uh, so this tradition is um, uh, often kept in a family uh, among the members or among the clan. And there has been a variations of uh, how the script system is made, but um, importantly, three of these uh, scripts are preserved. Uh, so for example, here, the British script has 20 uh, phonemes, uh, 20 types of combinations. Uh, for example, this R, uh, can also show the uh, sound ah, uh, the long vowel. The O can also uh, show the sound O. Oh. This can show U and U, E and E, E and E. And also here, the sound uh, can be either Z or Ch, S or Sh, Z or Z. Um, however, uh, in case of uh, Debeka script, which was introduced in the uh, previous um, slide here, it has only uh, 11 phonemes. It means that only 11 combinations and upon each of them, uh, there are several variants that can be uh, read by the uh, one combination. So it uh, makes a lot of much uh, misreading possibility. Uh, in case of Krauk's script, there are 32 phonemes, uh, 32 combinations, and it means that uh, most of uh, them uh, do not uh, double. Each, each uh, single combination is for a single sound. However, uh, Krauk's script uh, uses only a single thread. There is a loop and not both uh, usage. And that's why it is useful for people with um, um, impairments of sight, uh, of the vision. And also it is useful for um, a case when it is uh, not uh, light enough uh, environment. So you can uh, tie the knots and read the knots even in the complete darkness. Uh, that is the a strong uh, part of Krauk's script. However, the Beck and Brinch's script uses two uh, light and dark threads. Um, then about the cuneiform um, version, here you can see a birch bark, bar, uh, bark box. Uh, and uh, in Latvian it is called Tsiba. Uh, this one is uh, made by Kaspars Zvirbulis. And uh, on the surface of the box, uh, you can see that there are uh, vertical and horizontal line combinations, uh, which uh, also have uh, the significant meaning. And here um, this text uh, is uh, uh, having a song in it. Mēs puisīši vismantieši, mēs mācējām mazglusiet, tu meitiņa burteniece, gan mājēsi izlasīt. 
Actually, there should be gan ma cesi izlasīt. Uh, so there is misprinted j or j uh, with this kind of symbol instead of c or c with this symbol. So uh, there should be two vertical lines to make gan ma cesi izlasīt. So the meaning is we young men of Vismante, we knew how the knots are tied. You, the girl from Burtnieki, you shall know how it's read. Uh, further reading uh, about uh, my discoveries uh, uh, is uh, accessible on researchgate.net uh, by uh, searching for the not script, the lost writing system of the Latvian language. Uh, then uh, the second part of uh, today's talk uh, is about the sacred scriptures of uh, Dievturiba uh, or Latvian ethnic religion and uh, these um, scriptures are called the Dainas. Uh, there is a cabinet of folk songs which has been made in uh, 1880 and it contains more than uh, 268,000 texts and they uh, compromise the core sacred scriptures of Dievturiba. Uh, all these texts uh, have been digitalized and they are uh, accessible from the website uh, www.dainuskapis.lv. Uh, literally, it is uh, the Cabinet of Folk Songs or Dainus Capis. And you can look for uh, the text either by keywords uh, uh, used in the text or by the categories of songs. Let's say there is a category uh, of uh, singing the songs. And uh, within this category, the first part of them is exactly about the uh, song clues, about the knot script, about the tying the knots. Uh, and uh, that, that in that way recording the sound uh, song in a, in a sound clue and then um, <clears throat> then there are uh, categories as uh, wedding songs uh, wedding song part which is uh, sung in the bride's uh, house how she is uh, uh, prepared for the wedding ceremony and how her relatives are lamenting of her departure and so on. And uh, actually each, uh, every uh, situation of Latvian life uh, have a song for it. Uh, so uh, that is what is within this um, cabinet of folk songs, which is actually also a part of UNESCO World Heritage. Uh, so it is registered uh, in this list. However, in 2016, there were already 3 million units in the archives of Latvian folklore collected, and 1 million among them are dainas, uh, summarized and published in 14 volumes. Uh, furthermore, uh, 30,000 of folk melodies are also among these units and it makes uh, a significant uh, number of uh, these uh, Latvian uh, oral tradition uh, heritage, which has been recorded. Uh, mostly the, it was all recorded uh, within the uh, second half of the 19th century, Yet uh, a lot of uh, scholars uh, still continue working on and uh, the count is uh, advancing uh, year by year. So I'm waiting for the update of uh, information about the archives of Latvian folklore, how many more has been collected in recent five years. Uh, so here you can see uh, photos of the Cabinet of Folk Songs on the uh, left side of screen. That is uh, how it looks and it has uh, a lot of drawers and each of drawer has, uh, here is a close-up of one of them, 
uh, it uh, shows the compartments where uh, on each uh, leaf uh, leaflet um, there is a four lined uh, usually it comprises of four lines but but there are a lot of uh, songs which are much more longer. It, it is handwritten. Uh, there is a number given for the song and also the place uh, uh, where it was recorded and uh, also the collector's name and all other metadata is also um, included in these uh, papers. So you can afterwards uh, find out the distribution of songs of uh, similar lyrics in what regions they are and and uh, are they only a local uh, phenomenon or they are uh, widely distributed and on the right side of the screen you can see volumes of uh, dinas uh, which have been published uh, since uh, end of the 1910s and the 1920s and um, so they are uh, already more than 14 volumes of them uh, some people ask uh, how old are dinas how old are those texts and there um, it is a, a difficult question to answer because uh, those uh, singers uh, have added their uh, song lyrics uh, since the time being and uh, new folk songs uh, come uh, into existence and then they some of them are forgotten and some of them are kept uh, uh, sung by the next generations uh, but um, there is a, a specific uh, layer of songs that are about the burial or the funeral practices and uh, some of them are easily understandable for nowadays people however some of them show a specific uh, kind of uh, preparation of the dead body which is not uh, used anymore and for example there is a, a such a, a song like ko tu nāc nemocīts mūkuļaužu zemītē ni tev kauli izlauzīt nedzīsliņas izslai izstaipītas uh, why did you came uh, in um, the land of uh, sufferers without suffering uh, not nor your uh, bones were uh, broken uh, none your ligaments were stretched and the second one ko tu nāc neražanin ražano pulciņā tavas acis negrozītas tavas dzīslas nestaipītas uh, why did you came to the uh, ring or the flock or the group of uh, rich uh, people not being rich yourself. In case of Rajans in Latvian, uh, one meaning is rich, another meaning is abundant, uh, another meaning is someone who has a lot of uh, things, either in terms of uh, wealth or in terms of. Uh, experience uh, uh, the two sec uh, the, the two last lines uh, are as uh, nor your eyes are turned around nor your ligaments are stretched out so uh, as the first song says that uh, there is a surprise why the person has arrived to the land of sufferers without the bones being fractured broken ligaments are not stretched so the person is not prepared yet and the, and the, in the second song there is no your eyes are turned around so the uh, turning of eyeballs around so this kind of preparation is um, exclusively present in a one specific time one specific age 
uh, and it is only in late Neolithic period, which in case of Latvia was present uh, from 2900 to 1800 before current era. And uh, these kind of burials are called flexed burial practices. Um, why should such a song uh, or such songs uh, be preserved out of nowhere uh, if uh, this specific practice would not be intact? So it makes uh, one think about uh, how come these uh, texts are still uh, being able to be collected in uh, the second part of the 19th century. Uh, then regarding the uh, philosophy of uh, Dir Turiba, um, the Latvian spirituality, uh, which is uh, within Dainas, uh, there are uh, several uh, points uh, to, uh, to, to um, stress on. The first one is incentive virtues, such as innate goodness. Uh, then uh, among private, uh, there are cleverness, industriousness, beautiousness, cheerfulness. Among public ones, there are fondness, amicableness, generousness, righteousness. And uh, there is also a godliness. These are all the nurtured instead of prohibiting commandments. Then uh, there is a uh, honor shame uh, consciousness uh, driven behavior, not that of guilt or sin. There is no requirement to congregational affiliation or believing in dogmas. And while mastering one's virtues, one is uh, gratefully aware of blessings of Dios or the main uh, sacred being. Uh, then uh, in the photo, you can see uh, there is a puzuri, uh, the straw mobile, which is hung uh, from the ceiling. Uh, and uh, each of those uh, elements of it uh, rotate on their own. However, when you put uh, a force, if you uh, push uh, one of them, they will convey the motion to others. So this um, straw mobile shows the interconnectivity of everything in our nature, in our society. So everyone has these bonds with others and that's why each uh, action uh, makes reaction. And, uh, and uh, these are, this is a model of, of how to act uh, in this world. Uh, and then, um, uh, moreover, there is uh, now subjugation or submission. Uh, each person is uh, the master of one's own deeds, and therefore, Dios uh, lends a hand, and therefore, the sacred uh, wholeness uh, lends a hand or helps. The sacred permeates the profane, and hence, the spiritual ecology. And sustainability is a self-evident attitude. Recently, a lot of uh, people, a lot of countries uh, talk about the sustainability, sustainable uh, development, and so on. And this is uh, since the ever being a part, an intrinsical part of uh, Dainas. And then uh, there is a familiarity towards deities as a relic from the worship of one's ancestors as tutelary deities. And uh, you can discern two types of uh, uh, Deuteriba practices. One of them is uh, privately and the second one is publicly, uh, especially during this uh, time of uh, COVID-19 when uh, a lot of gatherings and public events uh, are restricted to some extent, it uh, makes uh, the way of uh, privately uh, practiced uh, these rituals uh, apart from the public ones. And here on the right side of screen, you can see example of uh, Dainas, uh, Latvian uh, folk songs, 
the sacred scriptures of the Ertoriba, which are ornamented with uh, Latvian uh, patterns, Latvian ornaments, or uh, Latvio raksti, which each of them have a specific meaning uh, denoting uh, deity or its uh, ability or blessing or so. And um, that is um, that is uh, an example in the private room, private space, where these uh, lyrics uh, can show a specific virtue uh, to be attained. And uh, lastly, I would like to show you a video from uh, YouTube. Uh, which is a song uh, Piedie Vinya Garigaldi, one of uh, Dinas. And actually, uh, this video is um, published by Embassy of Latvia to India. And um, it was uh, recorded on uh, February uh, 19, uh, 2020, uh, at the third Latvian Indian Choir Festival in Mumbai. So uh, please welcome, uh, the singer is uh, Mrs. Datze Melbarde, the former Latvian Minister of Culture and current member of the European Parliament. And with her, there is a, a musician and vocal coach, Igeta Wozolinja, uh, playing the instrument. So I will play the video now.
yes, that's uh, it for now. And uh, uh, I would like to answer your questions. Oh, thank you very much, Ogeshji. Yeah, definitely, there may be a lot of questions, but this is the first time I have come across such a practice of writing uh, songs on with the thread and knots. A very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm sure people will have a lot of questions to ask you. Uh, we, can, we can request the audience to ask questions. While you are preparing the questions, I will show uh, the example of this not script. I uh, tied my name in it. So this uh, first one is U, the letter vowel U. Then this is uh, J. This is E. This is S. So the four uh, light knots are S. Then N, A. A is one light knot. S, T, E, V, I, Ch, S. Udis Nastevich, yeah. This is how, how the name looks in this not script. Yeah. So please, questions. <clears throat> yeah, please go ahead. Anyone has questions to ask because a very interesting topic. I think very the first time I've ever heard about the knots writing. I I remember the other other script which was showing the vertical and horizontal lines. Yeah, I don't know, but. There is a similar kind of, you know, the, the Buddhist monks, the Buddhist, uh, the Buddhist have uh, the wheels where they write their songs on the sacred scripts. Uh, how do I do not know how much it will make because you mentioned about Japan, so that Japan is a Buddhist country, and most of the Buddhist uh, monasteries uh, also have these wheels, and people go and, you know, they they just put the you know, they rotate it, uh, presuming that the song is being played and prayers are being sung for the God, mm -hmm. the Buddha. So that's uh, that I have seen, but not these kind of talks. That's very interesting. Anyone has got any any question? Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I I have question if I may. Please go ahead. Um, please. Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Please go ahead. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can hear you. Go ahead. Hello. But yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you very well. Go Please. ahead. If it is hard to uh, do the video, you can try to write in the chat also. network issue. network issue pause I think Sandhya ji want to ask a, a question. Sandhya ji? I can't hear you. I, I can read in I can read in chat that uh, won't it be difficult to write long stories in not script? Thank you. Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, if you have a long, long story, then uh, as each of these for example, here you can see it is Ujis, only four letters in alphabet, but uh, in not script it makes like 10 centimeters. <laughs> so, of course, um, uh, the text becomes a lot of a, a lot longer and the yarn ball uh, becomes much more, much more bigger. Uh, but um, usually, according to those witnesses who have uh, being able to uh, read and tie these uh, not scripts, they say <coughs> usually uh, not uh, all lyrics were put in the not script. Usually they put the first or two uh, these um, couples of, of texts, uh, so other parts were already memorized. 
So uh, also this uh, not script was used for uh, biographical uh, data, data. For example, some person had some events in life and these were put like in a list together. Uh, very long stories uh, make it a much more bigger data indeed. Um, uh, I see another mm. question from uh, Sandhya Jain. Mm. Uh, so, I, I have a question. Yeah. Ah, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Please. Go ahead, Imreji. Go ahead. You have a network problem, I think. There is a network problem for Imreji. But anyway, you can write, write a question. Yeah, in the meantime, uh, I guess you can uh, reply to uh, Jen. Uh, OK. Ms. Jen, yes. OK, thank you. Um, so the question is, uh, so it is good for saving songs, but not stories. I think that rather for songs, rather for some rhymed text, which has rhymed endings, uh, usually our uh, sacred texts, our sacred uh, uh, mythical texts also have this uh, type of uh, putting information not in a uh, not uh, like uh, not in a novel text but in a song in a lyrical text so mm -hmm. indeed yes uh, mostly mostly these texts are in a lyric way yes i want to ask you a question yeah please uh, you pronounce every alphabet of uh, Roman letters or English letters in a way of Hindi patterns, Indian patterns. Just like V, you say Va, N, you say Na, A, you say A, uh, S, you say Sa. Is it a, you have a, any relation with Sanskrit scriptures or from where you, uh, you got origin of your alphabet? Ah, thank you very much. Uh, may I put my uh, slide again to show these examples, okay? So um, these uh, in, in Latvian alphabet nowadays, we have the same sequence as in English language. So A, B, C is the sequence as we have in nowadays alphabet. However, in case of not script, in case of not recordings, the sequence is uh, different. The sequence of these sounds come from the phonetical or phonological um, uh, characteristics. For example, A, O, U, all these three sounds, uh, they uh, retain a similar shape of mouth. That's why in the not script, they also have a similar notation. Uh, A, E, Y, all these three are uh, made in a similar way by our mouth cavity. B and P are the same, only uh, the difference is whether they are voiced or unvoiced. D and T also voiced or not voiced. Uh, K and uh, G also. So um, M and N are also uh, similar in the phonetical way. Uh, that's why the sequence here is uh, based up the phonetical characteristics, not uh, based upon the nowadays English or other alphabetical sequence. Uh, this, um, uh, this sequence, as, as you can see it here, it has been independently uh, developed by this not script uh, itself. It has not been uh, taken from any other uh, ready alphabet or, or so. I hope that I answered the question. Uh, there is also a question in the chat by San, Sanhya Jain. Uh, what was the logic behind the not script? Was there any persecution of the Latvian people which made your ancestors decide to hide their language and memories in this secret way? Uh, that is a very interesting question. Um, I would uh, answer it uh, in, um, in, in, in this way. 
uh, usually uh, the book introduction and the alphabetical education introduction in Latvia was done uh, together with Christianization uh, policy. Uh, so these peasants schools in the countryside uh, were made um, on the same time when the uh, Bible studies um, and the Bible recitation uh, started and alphabet itself uh, became as a tool for um, bringing people to the enlightenment of the Christian sacred scriptures. So in that way, alphabet uh, was a way of indoctrination, not only a mere educational tool for literacy, but for the religious literacy in terms of Christian. Uh, that uh, uh, being said, it also was the reason why people uh, showed the resistance to books, to printed books, which are done in alphabetical way. And uh, that's why people tend to keep their records in a way that are not uh, uh, done in alphabetical uh, characters in some different way. One of these were uh, memorizing the lyrics by memory, so oral tradition, keeping the texts uh, uh, not written at all, so uh, denying the alphabetical writing as it is. And the second way was this uh, not scripts, not records, which were kept already at least uh, since the 13th century, when um, after the Crusades, uh, one part of Latvians went to Lithuania, and this in this Latvian colony in Vismante village, it was uh, still um, used in the 1930s uh, on everyday basis. So yes, I would say that uh, that um, uh, there were persecutions, and there were persecutions made on the religious basis. Uh, and alphabet was a tool uh, for 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 uh, religious literacy, and uh, local peoples showed this resistance. Um, there is a question: uh, the Christians were the Russian Orthodox Church or Catholic Church? Um, I would say that both. Uh, it depends on the region of Latvia where uh, you are. If it is eastern uh, side, then rather the Orthodox, uh, and if you are on the western side, then it is rather Catholic Church. So it depends on region. Uh, however, uh, the uh, strong point of the not script is that uh, even if somebody, some intruder, uh, comes into your house and finds these uh, not script examples, the person couldn't read it. It was uh, in, uh, in, uh, not, uh, not uh, accessible to strangers. So uh, they may destroy the house, they may burn these uh, song clues, but they cannot access the information. Uh, it is the same as the memory of the person's mind. Uh, he can reveal it, he cannot uh, reveal it. It depends on the person, but these... Um, yarn threads are mute they do not reveal anything but alphabetical text if you get them then if you if you get a translator then you can access them but but here uh, it is much more difficult please more questions <coughs> yeah Imreji, go ahead we can see you go ahead you can ask question. Imreji, can you hear me? Or you can type your question. I think uh, his network is not working properly. Okay. So uh, we can conclude. No, there is a question, I think, in chat box. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, the speaker has written, please feel free to type your questions. Okay. 
we can bind up mathur sir okay okay ravi ji we will bind up okay thank you very much ogesh uh, ji uh, for this wonderful uh, for lecture uh, it is really uh, great to hear you about this kind of uh, preserving your uh, secret uh, uh, culture and tradition in the form of songs and knots uh it was wonderful it was um, i never never had uh, heard of, about it and i think it can also be used as a secret language even today uh, even today this can be used as a secret language i suppose and as i mentioned to you earlier that yeah we do hear about the on the buddhist monasteries they have the wheels which is uh, you swing them uh, rotate them uh, and the prayers are written on them and people feel that the prayers are going to the god but obviously the script is different so thank you very much for uh, this wonderful lecture once again i thank you ogesh ji we'll have more such lectures from latvians thank you everybody who joined us today namaste i i would like uh, to thank everyone who uh, could find uh, the time to connect uh, and uh, and also i would like to know more about the origins of devanagari script of uh, india and if there is a connection between the knot records and the shape of devanagari letters today uh, that would be also interesting topic to follow on and uh, yes uh, i i wish you a uh, good health for everyone and uh, i hope that we can meet uh, in person uh, and uh, yes very very uh, big gratitude to every one of you namaskar